Hello, my name is Andrea Spitaleri. I'm researching in Raffaele Scientific Institute in Milan. This is my second webinar. It will be on how to install and use program on Linux operating system in order to analyze data. When we deal with the bioinformatics, we need to keep in mind that the bioinformatics is a broad field. That means we're going from proteomics to sequencing analysis. And we're going through this using machine learning, artificial intelligence, modeling, algorithm, and so on. You can go to this YouTube video and the plus journal linked on the bottom in order to have really the feel how bioinformatics is developing now in life science. So basically, the role of bioinformaticians is very peculiar and is very important. It involves more than simple data analysis. So basically, the bioinformatician has the ability to add context comes from having far broader subject specific knowledge and competencies than just the informatic analysis skills. So basically, bioinformaticians, computer scientists and statisticians maybe share core skills, but will bring value to very different parts of the business. So basically, the data from raw data goes to bioinformaticians, which will analyze, will try to contextualize data in order to go back to the biology, in order to understand the mechanism of living systems. That's why the perfect bioinformaticians encompasses three different fields of science. It must be a computer scientist, must be a good biologist, and also a statistician. Mm -hmm. In this paper reported in the Plus Journal, there is a picture that you see here in the present in this slide. There are many different activities by performed by the, by the bioinformatician. And most of the time, most of the weeks, the bioinformatician spent of time building and testing pipelines behind all and the other, of course, different tasks. Normally, the bioinformaticians, the effort of bioinformaticians is to use command line. So the terminal I will be introduced in the first webinar, my first webinar, and the GUI, so basically the graphical user interface is uh, really has a very low percentage of usage in its duty. Here I summarize from another plus computational journal from another paper a very um, simple rules in order to start with the command aligned programs and also the time estimation for some tasks performed by bioinformaticians. We started from really few weeks performing a routine analysis to develop new algorithms and that takes months, even to go from one year to develop new publicly accessible tool or even better to build and to, and to develop web accessible databases. So, why we need pipelines? There are many reasons actually why we need pipelines and why bioinformaticians spent most of the weeks, most of the, most of the times doing pipeline. I just summarize in three different hints in this slide. First, for your future. So basically, you having a, a robust pipeline, you can quickly rerun analysis with different parameters and tools. And then it's a very good documentation how results are being reproduced. For others, allow others to easily reproduce your findings. So basically, when you write your paper, you present your results. Now you should also add your pipeline, so your to the tools, how do you, you use the tools in order to generate your data. And this is a help, of course, your analysis to be reproducible and reliable for the all life science community. And then, of course, all of these go together in 
pipelines allow to reuse the same code between projects and also to share with the other colleagues. Have a look to the paper recently published in, uh, on natural methods. How important are the uh, bioinformatics pipeline in life science research? Okay, but what is computational pipelines? So, in bioinformatics, data analysis consists of a series of heterogeneous programs stringed together via input out of chain. If you remember well, in the, my first webinar, I told you uh, any command has three different streams, standard input, standard output, and the standard error. One input goes in one pipe, which basically analyze and reformat the output in order to be the input of another step of your pipeline. And that, and that will be very important since uh, the pipeline is a series of scripts written in different languages, programming languages. And they are linked to each other in order to perform the all different analysis, which normally those analysis are transparent. And what do you get in the end of the your pipeline is a final report, which is normally is a, either a CSV or PDF or HTML file. And what it, it consists, this final report is merging all information through the workflow in order to have the analysis, the final analysis of your biological data. So basically you can imagine your pipeline as a, a black box for the user where you put input, your data will be any, and then you end up with results, important results in order to make a rational to what you see from your experiments. As I told you, pipeline is built on scripts. Basically, it's a set, it's a consists of a series of scripts linked each other by input, output, input, output, in order to perform analysis. Scripts are human readable programs. So basically are programs, then programmer, programmers and bioinformaticians write in order to make tasks. Software exists that they read in text files containing instru instructions to be executed by the computer. So that's what we call scripts. They are not binary files. So basically you can open with the URL editor, you can read, and you can understand what it's doing. Normally the programming languages you use it is Perl, Python, R, or even Bash. Scripting languages are very popular in, in, bioinformatic in bioinformatics because of their relative low barrier to get starting. Their platform independence and quickly and dirt approach in case of Perl and the easy sharing, just the load the script and execute. You get the analysis of your input. In bioinformatics, there are tools helping in making pipeline. As I told you, pipeline is a, is a series of scripts written in different languages, normally Python and Perl. All these scripts need to be linked to each other, reading input and output in in order way. There are tools which help to link this chain of scripts in one single program. I just present here in this slide some of them. We, we, we know GNU make, snake make, bpipe, and now Nextflow is the most widely used. Then we have also GUI, so graphical user interface base. We know Galaxy, Gene Pattern, Chipster, Taverna, Pegasus, among others. 
There are also commercial solutions, for instance, in order to perform hernia sick. And also, they are very nice, very important, because they are very usual for people, biologists, which have no programming skills. So just install and click in order to perform the analysis. So now let's go on the tip. How install programs, how to use programs when we have these tools. In the first webinar, I present to you Linux operating system. As I told you, the Linux operating system is basically widely used by, by, by informaticians. Either using Linux operating system native, such as Ubuntu, or using Mac OS X. Whether you are not allowed to use, or because for some restriction, or you are, cannot install Linux by the easy way or the hard way, you can also go through the virtual machine, which is a basically as a virtualization layer of your new operative system installed or the top of another operative system. Of course, there are many pros and the cons of the virtual machines. One of the cons is, uh, is, very is a very high computational cost because your CPU will be running 100% of the time because it has to simulate a second operative system on the top of the real operative system installed in your laptop or either workstation. So this is very high cost for your computer. Then there are other way to overtake this problem, this, to overcome this problem. These are present in this uh, slide is a Docker. It will be mm, presented in the next slides or use them or to use to perform your analysis using the Galaxy web server. In this slide and the next one, I present to you some solution of some workstation in order to perform reliable analysis on your own. If you have a small infrastructure, basically you want to have a, um, a workstation under your bench, this is the typical hardware for your computers. And this is the price ranging from um, 10,000 euros to 50,000, could be even 100,000 euros. If you are, of course, having a, faci a facility to install a cluster. Then, of course, uh, you, can, uh, you can go to big infrastructure, but then it's going to be very expensive. Uh, we are going to deal with 100,000 for euro, and this will be more high performing computer. It will be based on different uh, sealers, such as IBM, HP, SGI. Or, in that case, you will have also the importance to have people to do maintenance of your cluster of this big infrastructure. And there will be administrators, normally more than one. You need to have also fast networks in order to have a fast and quick communication between the nodes of your cluster. You need to also to have a batch queue system in order to handle different programs, different uh, running, pro running programs in your, from uh, different users on your clusters. And then also, you can have also optional MMPI and the GPU environment, depending on the project requirements. Those uh, normally goes to high performance computing facilities. We have as many in Europe, and they can be used by just um, buying or having hours of computational time by project. Uh, here I just uh, highlight some of the most important in, uh, in Europe, which is um, Mare Nostrum in Barcelona and uh, in Italy, Sineca, also, and also Fugago in Japan, which is uh, so far is the, in the top 10 high performance computing in, in, in the world. In case you don't have 
the possibility to install virtual machine or install a Linux on your machine or you are not possible to have facilities with the really good uh, high performance computing, you can go to the cloud computing. And this is a different pro for course. You have flexibility to use, you pay what you use, and you don't need to maintain any hardware facility. Of course, there are also many cons. You need to transfer big data over the internet, and that normally computer is slow. You pay for consuming the bandwidth. You have a low performance since you are using a very huge facility used by different exploited by different users around the world. You can have also privacy security concern because you are, of course you are transferring your own data to the net to another computer to for performing analysis. And then of course what is important, cloud computing could be useful for very short of time analysis. When you have a very big project or long term project, that's start to be more expensive with respect to have your own facility in the in your facility for making calculations. There are different cloud computing resources. One of those I remember, I, you remember is Amazon Web Service and the other is Microsoft Azure. They are both commercial, so you need to pay, but they are widely used around the world. So but now let's uh, be positive. Let's consider we are on Linux machine installed, sorry, Linux operating system installed in your machine, or even better, you have your cluster facility. Normally, if you want to install on Ubuntu a program, you need to search the true name. So for this, uh, we use uh, the first command, which is called apt cache search, and then the name of the program. The output, so the standard output, will be a series of, na of names matching the name of your program you want to install. Once you have found the real name, so the true name, you can install by following the apt search using apt get install the, the real name of the program. For doing that, you can use sudo program, which you need also root password. Otherwise, you cannot install in your Linux uh, the programs. You can use also the graphic interface program to install programs. This is called software GNOME. There again, there is a search. You can search the name. You get the list as you do basically in Windows and you need to install. As in Windows, you need the administrator, so the root password in order to install in your machine. In this slide, some example of bioinformatic programs, useful for making analysis. The first one is a suite of command line tools to run BLAST in your computer. BLAST is the common program to align FASTA sequence. Then we have HMER, which is the bisequence analysis using hidden Markov models. Then we have another <clears throat> alignment program, which is MAFT. Can be alignment between amino acid or DNA or RNA sequences. Another one similar to MAFT is MASCO. Again, different in order to align amino acid of protein and DNA, RNA, nucleotide, nucleotide sequences. It also very nice read seek which reads and convert by sequence between a selection of common biological sequence formats. This is very important. It is what we call the Swiss knife in order to format one sequence in order to be used between programs. Instead of to use uh, your opti-get uh, to install using 
with root uh, password you, to install your programs, you can use a different package managers, a, contain a container software. The next slides, we go through the Conda environment and the, the doc environment. Conda is a popular package management system used in machine learning and artificial intelligence research. To install Conda, you need to go to the Bioconda server, search for your package, and then follow the install command. It's quite easy. So for instance here, mtbseq, which is a, a, um, a pipeline to manage, to analyze FASTQ files from mycobacterial tuberculosis. This pipeline allows to perform variant calling, to perform different analysis of your FASTQ files. It's quite easy. You see, once you have a Conda installed, the, the Conda package installed in your um, computer, it's quite easy because you need to only perf to type in your terminal Conda install the channel where you find the, the package and the name of the package. For instance, for TBSEC, you see is Conda install, the channel is Bioconda and the name is called MTBC. They install the package easily as ATP, APT install we, we saw previously on your computer. In this case, you don't need to have root password to install because the Conda package, the Conda management will create an environment for you only for you, and so you will install the all the uh, all the programs, all the requisite for to run the the programs your pipeline, sorry, on your home directory. Another package environment with respect to Conda, different Conda is Python. Python pip environment allow to create virtual environments to install. Python packages. So basically using pip environment of, from Python, you can create a virtual environment, which is a self-contained sandboxed environment just for your applications. It only has the package for your specific and they are totally distinct from the system installed ones. So again, you don't need to install, sorry, you don't need to install the, the programs using the root password, but you create your own environment, your own installing, following the, the, the few lines reported in the slide, the, your package to be used for your pipeline analysis. So basically the differences between Python pip and the code environment are PIP is a package manager. The facility is the installation, upgrade, and installation of a Python packages only. Conda is a package manager for any software. So you can install, upgrade, and do an installation for any different software, not only Python. Now we go to the next step, how to install programs in Linux. In all in Linux, but also on Windows and on Mac OS X. We are going to talk about container. In particular, we are going to talk about Docker. There are different do um, containers, but among all, uh, Docker is the most widely used. What is a container? Container image is a lightweight, standalone, executable package of a piece of software that includes everything you need to run code, runtime, system, tools system libraries settings. So basically a container is like a virtual machine, but it's not heavy as a virtual machine. Docker and other tools such as uh, Singularity, for instance, has the grand advantage to make your analysis to be reliable 
reproducible among the other scientists. When you do a containerization, we deal with uh, the possibility to make one single package within all the, the important software libraries to make analysis. So basically, containerization is any system that allows multiple isolated operating system to run inside a larger host system. So basically, as I told you, it's like a virtual machine, but it's not heavy as a virtual machine. The most basic type of containerization is HA root, which runs an application in a jail where it cannot see or access anything outside of, of its jail. So basically, you cannot do anything with the Docker, but will not make uh, any problem for your operating system. So will not will not give any, let's say, danger to your stability of your operating system. The most popular and well supported system of containerization is Docker, which will be focused for this workshop. Why and when you want to use Docker? Docker is the ideal way of developing application. For, for instance, web application can need a proxy server, database, and application code. For, a for instance, we can say we have a Galaxy, GitLab, and Ghost. Or we can use Docker to, analyze, to make pipeline to analyze data that require many runtimes, Python, Perl, Java, and many tools, some tools, JTK, VAP, and so on. We have different uh, way to deal with this uh, analysis pipeline. And then most of them uh, is based on Snake, May, and Nextflow. But where Docker is not ide ideal. For instance, want to want to want to use Docker for command line utilities or tools that multi multi manipulate files or use that file system. For, for instance, some tools, B, B, A, Vim, and so on. That in that case, you, need, you don't need to install Docker, don't use Docker, but you need just to install the, the software. Or, for instance, want to, you want to use a graphical interf or GUI interface application, such as a, a editor, browser, and FastQC for the quality check of your FastQC and so on. What are the advantages of Docker? Bundle dependencies. Docker images contain all their own dependencies, which means you don't have to do any installation yourself. So you just run your Docker in your machine and that's it. It will take care about all the different dependencies. Cross-platform installation. Docker contains contain their own operating system, so they will run on any platform, Windows, Linux, Mac OS X 10. Easy distribution. Can be distributed as a single tar image or put on a Docker hub. So from the terminal, you can do just Docker pull and the name of the Docker. Safety. Files in a container can access files on the host machine so user can trust dockerized applications. Easy of use. Docker containers can always be run using one single docker run command. Finally, easy upgrades. Docker containers can be easily swapped out of a newer version while all persistent data can be retained in data volume. How to run Docker? To run a container, for instance, Docker, all you need to do is specify the image name. A Docker will pull the image Docker from Docker Hub and begin to run it. So basically, Docker run and the image name. For instance, you can do your computer, this exercise, doc run hello world, and you will see printing on the terminal, hello from Docker. And this will tell you the Docker is installed properly in your machine. As all Terminal commands, Docker are different parameters, are different 
options. Here in this slide, I presented the most important, where you can interrogate the Docker database in order to see, in order to check a particular Docker which contains a particular pipeline to analyze your data. You can use uh, Docker images, for instance, you want to display all the installed images in your computer. You want to use Docker PAs in order to display the running Dockers in your computer. You can execute, you can stop the running containers. Finally, I will talk to you about NF Core, which is a community to collect a a curated set of analysis pipeline using Nextflow. Nextflow is another way to make a pipeline to basically to allow to the different scripts of from different programming languages to, to talk each other. It is allowed to basically to run for people programs to analyze data in an easy way. NF Core is a community where it basically has a different pipelines to analyze bacteria, to analyze Homo sapiens data, to analyze RNA seq, to analyze different really, to also to perform metagenomics. Um, has high optimized pipelines with the excellent report, final report. It's important because it's a portable, it's well documented, documented and easy to use. Here, just report an example how to run, for instance, the RNA-seq pipeline. So basically, once you install the NF core and NF next flow on your machine, then what you need to run is just a few is just to fit the next flow and of your pipeline with really few inputs. You'll have a different, different pipeline available. You can search in the their web pages. Mo among them, I, I like to remember there are pipeline based on area seek uh, to analyze um, somatic and germline variants in HOMO, chip sick, ATA sick, and, uh, and for bacteria also we have a backed map pipeline, which is uh, basically a bioinformatics pipeline, analysis pipeline for mapping short fleets from bacterial, from all genome sequence, to a reference sequence, to create filter VCF files, to make uh, pseudogenomes based on high quality position the UACF file and optional, op, optionally creating a phylogeny from alignment of the pseudogenomes. So basically, once you install the next flow, you need to run backpop just <clears throat> running next flow run and F core backpop with a different name of your container, could be Docker or Singularity. And that's it, quite easy. Finally, in case of doubts, you just need to ask, to ask to the net. There are many different communities around the world which are ready to help people in answer question, in searching for help. I just want to remind you BioStars, Galactic Help and the Stark Flow.